The first brick in the PNG deterrent wall is the processing centre on Manus Island. Right now there are about 130 people in the camp, but there are plans to expand capacity to 3,000. Ronnie Knight is the Manus Island PNG, uh, MP in PNG government, and I spoke to him a short time ago from Port Moresby. Thank you. Uh, how is this decision being received in Manus? Uh, it's uh, a lot yeah, of mixed emotions. Of uh, most of the people that I can see are for it. Uh, looking at the development aspects of it, we're looking forward to, uh, if this goes through, we should be able to get Mamoti Airport to be upgraded to an international airport. How many people can fit on Manus Island at the moment? At the detention centre, uh, apparently it should be around about four to five hundred as far as I know. But when they expand the temporary facilities, how many people do you think can be held there while we wait for the permanent facilities to be built? That is a very interesting question. Um, at the moment, I believe they can handle probably up to five hundred. Um, that, then that would be crowded. They would need to do some extensive work as, as they build more, more tents and they put up more dongas. They would also need to you know, upgrade the missing facilities and all the, all the associated things that go with that as well. So th uh, that can pretty, in, in a military operation, that can pretty much be done within a week or so. Um, but then again, you know, the, the care that these people receive will probably be, the more people are in there, the less care that they will get. You know, it's just one of those things. And how long will it take to get it up to 3,000? Um, if you're talking about the permanent facility, and uh, the scope of building that I'm looking at now, I believe that it would take about two years to complete a, uh, a, a permanent facility. Their option now would be uh, most uh, realistically to extend the, uh, the temporary facility. And that could be done in a couple of days, depending on how many tents and dongas they need. And will the facility be on the same site, the permanent facility? No. Um, we have there's several sites picked. Um, the one that they're putting forward to be used now, it's in Ward 2 in Lorengau Town, which will be a contentious issue. Most of us here were not, uh, like I myself was not involved in the discussions and not uh, asked to give advice, but I would rather that this facility be put on Los Negros. It's on government land out of town and it's uh, isolated. It's the same as if you had a asylum centre seeker in the middle of Cairns, uh, centre in the middle of Cairns. It doesn't make sense to have something like that in the middle of our town. Is it the Australian government that's pushing that site? I'm not sure where the, uh, the idea is coming from. I don't believe the Australian government is behind. I think it's something between our, our uh, public servants and our politicians. Why is it, do you think, that people are keen to locate this centre right in the middle of your town? <laughs> That's a hard one. Um, I don't know why. Maybe somebody owns a block of land there that they would rather the Australian government lease from them. I'm not sure. But I don't think it's going to happen because as far as I'm, I'm concerned, I'm standing totally against it. And the people, I'm asking the Australian government and the Papua New Guinea government to realise that this block of land that is there that they're trying to use is in the middle of town. You promised the Los Negros people something else. Remember that Los Negros is the gateway to Manus. We have an airport there. We have the power station there. We have a national high school there. Let's not make any more troubles for ourselves. Let's promise to deliver what we promised and put the facility on Los Negros Island, not on Manus Island and not in the middle of town. It would be totally stupid to put something like this in the middle of Cairns. We shouldn't put something like this in the middle of Lorengau. It just doesn't make sense. You said at the outset that you thought it would take two years to build the permanent facility. Do you have any idea what that might cost? Yeah, um, I think I cited some documents that the idea was that uh, the sort of building, the original building, which I believe was to accommodate 600, was going to cost about $72 million. So, you know, if you work that out to 3,000, that's you times it by four, that'll probably give you an idea of what we're looking at. It's a big hunk of change. Uh, give us some sense of the population of Lorengau. How big is it? Uh, Lorengau town, you look at it, got a population of about 5,000. And how do you think a population of about 5,000 would cope with 3,000 people being introduced in a detention centre? How could you cope with something like that? Well, that's the, that's the main reason why I don't think it's a good idea to have it in Lorengau town. If it's on Los Negros and it's away from the town, it's easy to control and uh, much, uh, much better to, you know, keep uh, the asylum seekers out of the actual general community. As we can see recently with the recent riots in, uh, in uh, Nauru, you don't want that happening in the, middle of our, in the middle of our town. 
how could you control, no matter where it was, riots in a population of potentially 3,000 people? Well, that is an issue for G4S. They're the company that's in there and they should have enough people in there to handle that problem. Is it your understanding from your Prime Minister that all the people who are found to be refugees that are being processed through Manus or will be processed through Manus will be resettled in Papua New Guinea? Um, yes, um, from the brief conversation I had with him that there would be, he was saying that um, that was the idea, but I don't think that will happen in Papua New Guinea because the, uh, the track to get citizenship in Papua New Guinea is probably even more stringent than for an Australian to get, get Australian citizenship. Um, there are certain conditions that I don't think any of those uh, asylum seekers will, uh, will, uh, will be able to uh, meet. Um, I think the way I read it is that we're going to be looking at processing them and moving them off to another country. I don't think that Papua New Guinea will, will be handling them. So, Ronnie Knight, where do you imagine the people who are found to be re refugees, which you believe won't be resettled in Papua New Guinea, will go? Well, mate, that's the good question. That's between our Prime Ministers. I have no idea at the moment, but I believe that they could be put... Uh, put to countries that maybe owe Papua New Guinea some, some favours, um, maybe other third world countries or other third countries, not third world countries, third countries. Um, we're looking at other Pacific countries, maybe New Zealand, uh, I'm not sure, but uh, we'll find out later as the, uh, the plan, um, the plan uh, evolves. I, myself, I knew nothing about it you know, until uh, Friday morning when the Prime Minister talked to me, just like everybody. So I don't know the real nitty-gritty of it, but uh, I don't think that they would make a plan like that without, you know, having a look at all the aspects of it. But I will say this, it's a brave plan by the Australian Prime Minister. I know it will put a stop to a lot of people coming to Australia if they know they're going to be stuck in Manus for uh, three or four years. And uh, maybe it's just uh, one of those things that will make them think twice before trying to come through the back door. Ronnie Knight, thank you. Thank you very much.